I recently recorded a video that I titled, Are We Being Taught Not To Think? This sounds so controversial and so negative. So I want to talk about how this can happen in the best of intentions, completely subtly and completely unconsciously. So we can ask ourselves, do we really think when we're being taught? How can I teach you not to think without actually telling you not to think? If I consciously say to you, I don't want you to think about this particular topic, your, your brain would resist that. And you're like, no, Yvonne, I have to think. Like, I'm supposed to be thinking. Fine. So if I actively tell you that I don't want you thinking, you're going to resist that. However, if I say to you or if I teach you that you need to wait for me to tell you stuff before you're able to think about it yourself, you start learning not to engage your active thinking until I've told you stuff. Okay, what does this look like? Let's take a look at two different ways of teaching you. The first way is probably what most of us are used to, which is you go to class, today we're going to study X, Y, Z. And your lecturer, your teacher tells you all about the topic, gives you notes, gives you information, gives you readings, gives you stuff to do, and then says, here, yeah, you need to go and make this your own. You know, you need to go and study this, you need to go and work on it, and then do questions. Now, all of that is fine, and for most of us, that's what most of our studying looks like to some extent or the other. The starting point is I give you information. This is what we're gonna learn. This is how you're gonna learn it. This is all the information you're gonna need. And here you need to take this further. So you may need to fill in the gaps um, and then you need to do questions. So that's, let's say that's scenario A or that's teaching style A. Teaching style B, the starting point would be, let's, let's take a look at a potential problem that you're gonna face in your workplace or with this topic. Let's say your client comes in and asks you ABC. How would you respond to them? Now, this is a really interesting approach because we haven't covered that topic yet. Or maybe you've covered a very basic form of that topic in the previous year. So you did, you know, level one of that topic and now we're looking at level two or a higher, you know, and a more advanced level of it. So naturally there's a sense of discomfort of like, I can't answer that question, everyone, because you haven't actually given me the information. So the two approaches, the difference is that in, in, in teaching style A, I'm giving you the information first. And in teaching style B, I'm giving you the problem first. And I'm saying, look, if this is a problem that you're facing, I want you to think about how you would solve it. And once you've thought about it, once you've given it some thought based on your general knowledge, your understanding, your imagination, your creativity, you know, your experience of past years, etc., then we'll talk about how it is actually solved in practice or the different ways that this could be solved or the theory relating to this, okay? What's the real difference here? The difference with teaching style A is that basically I'm teaching you to wait. Don't ask questions. Don't think about stuff and don't try to solve problems until you have all the information, okay? So by default, what I'm, what I'm teaching you to do is to sit back and wait. Yvonne, I can't answer the question because I don't have all the information yet. Therefore, I'm not thinking for myself. I'm waiting for you to think for me. You do the thinking, the notes, the information, the videos, the lectures, that does the thinking for me. And by the time I get to questions, the thinking has been done for me. And all I need to do is push the thinking into the question. I mean, it's massively oversimplified, but... I want you to follow the train of thought. Information first, which means I give you the answer first and then the problem. You are not required to engage your brain and go, how would I do this? How would I think about this for myself? Because you're waiting for someone else to tell you how it should be done. As opposed to teaching style B, which is your starting point is, I want you to take the risk. Think about it, consider it, how would you do it? Now, I think for, for us, you know, when we're dealing with, you know, topics that have right or wrong, if you will, so accounting, for example, there's a sense that there's either a right way to do it or a wrong way to do it. The question obviously is, does it, is there any value in me trying to come up with something if I know that it's gonna be wrong? Like if there's a specific way to do it, why would I try and create something else um, 
why wouldn't I just wait for you to tell me what the right way is? And I think that also suits our personality style if we're used to thinking in that way. So there's a very logical avoidance of this type of situation. Yvonne, don't give me a problem when there is a very specific answer to it. And I obviously don't know what that is. Like, are you just setting me up to look stupid? That doesn't make any sense. So there is a logical avoidance or resistance to this, but let's scratch at the, the underlying skill. Okay. The underlying skill of looking at a problem yourself is the engagement of your own brain, all your experience, everything you know, forcing that to come together and go, if this was me, what would I do? Right? That is thinking, trying to create solutions, trying to create connections, trying to connect information, understanding things, uh, imagination, creativity, to use your own professional judgment to go, what would I do here? It is not about the answer, right? It is about the thought process. It is about the skill of taking what you know and really thinking about it and putting yourself out there. Even if you don't tell anyone else the answer, I mean, it's not to say that you've got it like, okay, Von, you know, I'm in class and I have to try and give an answer now. Forget that. Just for you in your own head, the, the requirement of you to engage your brain actively and go, what would I do here is a very uncomfortable situation for us, but it is a very important skill, right? And the reason that this is important is because as you move further in your career, as you increase your levels of professionalism, knowledge, complexity, da, 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 we will increasingly find that the world is full of grays rather than black and white that there are different options, interpretations, guidelines. And so as much as we may like to believe that there's a right answer, the reality is in most cases, there's like, there really isn't that much of a right answer. It could be this, it could be that, interpreted this way, guidelines say that, how would you do it? What do you think? What's your professional judgment, subjectivity, et cetera, et cetera, which means it's very important for you to have the skill of going, based on everything I know, based on my values, based on my beliefs, based on my understanding, my logic, my whatever, based on all of this, what would I do here? This is a skill that you cannot develop if all you're ever doing is feeding someone the information they've already given you. It's much more comfortable and in that space, it's, it's much easier to feel like you're learning and to feel like you know what you're doing because you've got this database of knowledge and when you're asked a question, you just pull from this knowledge and go, oh, you want that, let me give you that. Oh, you want that, let me give you that, okay? But at higher levels, we're increasingly required to solve problems we've never seen before, which means we are required to sit there and go, look, some of this sounds a little familiar, some of it sounds nothing familiar. How do I do this? Well, for the stuff that is familiar or, or that part of the problem, I know I can apply my knowledge. But for the stuff that's unfamiliar, I've got to think about whatever I do know and consider what to do with it. We cannot be in a position where the only thing we're able to do is go, Oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, I can only solve problems that I've seen the information for, you know, there's a textbook uh, problem on that, or I've seen the chapter on that, or I've seen a question on that, and so therefore I can solve that problem. So these two styles are really interesting. The, the, the ability to think through a problem and come up with something, as wrong as it may be, is not about the answer. It's about the ability to think engage your brain, sit forward and go, genuinely, what would I do here? That is an interesting skill. 